Amplify your connection, exploring the world through ham radio waves. Are you ready to explore the world of ham radio? Ham radio is a well-liked pastime and service involving people, electronics, and communication. Join our ham radio workshop series and unlock a world of communication possibilities. Importance of ham radio. When usual channels are inaccessible due to a natural disaster or other disruptive occurrences, critical communication services should be available. Five online sessions and full-day hands-on workshops. Don't miss out. Experience the magic of ham radio. Get ready. Registration starting soon. Commencement of workshop. I'm Yashir Bimser, your host for the day, and I warmly welcome you to the introductory session of the latest initiative of IEEE Y2N Pro, the RAM, Ham Radio Communication Workshop Series. So today we are gathered here to commence the first session. It's all about Ham Radio. To give a brief overview of this workshop series, it is a comprehensive six-week course that offers both theoretical and practical insights into ham radio communication. You will be able to dive into the fundamentals of ham radio communication, learning how to construct antennas and use software-defined radios. Without further ado, I'd like to start, uh, today, start today's meeting. I would like to invite Mr. Vinora Pereira, the program team lead of Y2N Pro, to welcome the gathering. Uh, thank you, Yasuri. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to the orientation session of the Ham Radio Communication Workshop Series organized by IEEE Y2N Pro. After the successful conclusion of four workshop series on various fields, today you will witness the commencement of our latest initiative. This latest workshop series is designed for you to gain comprehensive understanding of ham radio communication. You will be able to learn the theoretical aspects as well as get hands-on experience related to ham radio communication. It will be a platform for you to connect with other ham radio enthusiasts and experts. Finally, you will be able to earn an IEEE Continuing Education Unit Credential Certification in Ham Radio Communication upon successfully facing the evaluations. Not only that, this workshop series will also be an opportunity for you to prepare for the ham radio license. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am honored to welcome Mr. Taranga Prematilika, President of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka as one of our guest speakers today. Mr. Prematilika is a distinguished figure in the industry and has contributed significantly to advancements in technology and engineering achievements. We are grateful for your presence and look forward to you to your valuable insights. I'm also honored to welcome Mr. Kusal Epa, another distinguished personality in this field, as our other guest speaker. Mr. Epa is a licensed amateur radio operator with over 30 years of experience and in a high, highly accomplished and respected figure in the field of radio communication. We are grateful for your presence and look forward to your valuable insights. Along with Mr. Prematilka and Mr. Epa, I take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Victor Gunatilka, a prominent personality of the global radio community for gracing this occasion. We are grateful for your presence and look forward to your valuable insights. I would, I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome the Executive Committee of IEEE Young Professionals Sri Lanka, chaired by Ms. Varunika Hippola, member and volunteers. I would also like to welcome all of you, the participants who have joined us today. Your presence here is a testament to your commitment to learn and explore new avenues in, our, in your respective fields. I hope that you will give us your fullest support in conducting a successful workshop series. Finally, I, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the organizing committee of IEEE Young Tunis Professors who worked hard to make this workshop series a reality. Uh, I would again like to extend my gratitude to everyone here for your enthusiasm in the workshop series and hope that you will take the maximum out of today's introduction session and the sessions to come. Thank you and have a good evening. Over to you, Yasiru. Thank you, Mr. Vinner. 
Now let's have a quick look into what vitamin pill is. Who are we? What do we offer? We cater to almost all the industries. Electrical and electronic engineering. Computing and information technology. Mechanical engineering. Law and order. Environmental science. Business administration. We unleash your potential. We are looking for niche communities. Of young specialty Can be freshers to update with the industry. Might be interested in a particular field. Don't worry. Join us to find solutions for all your doubts. We are by to improve young to niche professionals. Before moving forward, a very special mention in due to the Radio Society of Sri Lanka for all support extended in making this workshop a reality. Today, joining us, we have three distinguished personalities from the industry to take you through the introduction to ham radio creation. Firstly, we have Mr. Victor Gunatilaka with a lifelong passion for radio, Mr. Victor Gunatilaka, known as uh, 4S7VK, is a revered figure in a global radio community. Beginning his journey at the young age of 13, he is a seasoned DXer. He has also served as the president of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka, earning the Golden Antenna 2005, awarding a uh, award for outstanding contribution during the tsunami disaster. As a technical monitor at the Voice of America, he dedica his dedication to the technical aspects of radio communication is evident. Beyond his physical powers, he serves as a mentor for young radio enthusiasts as, and embodies a deep appreciation for radio as a way of life. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and gracing us today. Next, we have Mr. Kosalepa joining us today. With over 30 years uh, as a licensed amateur radio operator, Mr. Kusalepa is a highly accomplished figure in radio communication. Former Honorary Secretary of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka, he played a crucial role in disaster relief post-2004 tsunami. He has diversified expertise with over 25 years of experience in cellular mobile and mission critical communication. He has contributed significantly to pub public uh, safety and critical communication services in Australian government agencies for the past eight years. Mr. Abbas, rich academic background, extensive professional experience, and unwavering dedication make him a valuable asset to the radio communication community. Thank you for accepting our invitation and gracing us today. Next, we have Mr. Taranga Prematilaka joining us today with five years of experience at Tech Lab Globals. Private Limited, Mr. Tarang Prem Tilaka is an accomplished electronics engineer ex uh, excelling in PCB design, firmware development, team management, and more. As a visiting instructor at YMB University, he contributes to shaping the future engineers of Sri Lanka. Additionally, Mr. Prem Tilaka serves as the president of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka, actively involved in amateur radio. His unwavering com commitment, expertise, and passion for knowledge sharing make him a key contributor to technological advancement and engineering achievements. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and gracing us today. 
Moving on with the proceedings of today's introductory session, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our distinguished speaker, Mr. Vikre Gunatilaka, to deliver his presentation on It's All About Ham Radio, A Big Picture. The spotlight is yours, sir. Uh, good evening, friends. And it's a pleasure and a privilege uh, to be joining you today and speak uh, a few words about amateur radio. Uh, some people think amateur radio is a hobby. And for most people, it is a hobby. But I like to go beyond that. For many of us, amateur radio is not just a hobby, but is empowering us with the ability to experiment with radio waves on low frequencies, high frequencies, into the very high frequency range, or in short, the entire range of radio signals. So it is a means of empowering ourselves with a means to transmit radio signals for various experimental purposes. The best known, of course, is to communicate far and wide between countries, people who are interested in the same line of work, experimenting, wow. making transceivers, radio receivers, antennas, and communicating between countries. Well, in short, from Sri Lanka, the entire world is open to you to communicate depending on how good your transmitting yeah. equipment is. So from Sri Lanka, the world is at your fingertips if you want to enjoy international communications. And within Sri Lanka, we have excellent coverage during disasters or on any average day to communicate with people all within Sri Lanka. Now, this is a resource that is limited to people who have obtained an amateur radio license by sitting an examination conducted by the Telecommunications uh, Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka. And after a defense clearance, you're given permission to experiment with radio signals. So having obtained this facility, what you can do with radio signals is limitless. It is up to your imagination as to what you can do. I started radio, uh, amateur radio. Before, of course, getting my amateur radio license, I was interested in picking up radio signals on the broadcasting station uh, type. Just one minute. Sorry to interrupt. This is Tarang. Yeah, uh, I, st I started by saying that I got into radio signals by picking up radio signals from all over the world, from broadcasters like the BBC, listening to cricket commentaries, and also aircraft communications or point-to-point, -point, as you say, radio telephones and all that, and ship-to-shore communications, which was fascinating for me to hear people and listen to them with a radio. And then after a while, I got into uh, the thought that if I could transmit, not just listen, I could go on to another realm. So then I found that there is amateur radio by sitting an exam, studying for it, that you could get a license and you could transmit on any frequency range, depending, of course, the frequencies allocated to us by the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission. So it was fascinating for the first time in my life to be able to transmit and hear people responding to my signals from all corners of the world, from a little transmitter, which I made at home with the aid of a friend who was experienced in amateur radio already, I was able to use this little cigar box transmitting circuit and communicate using Morse code with people all over Europe and America. It's unimaginable. If you don't know what amateur radio is, it's absolutely fascinating to be able to communicate with people using Morse code all over the world, from your home, from within your home. And then, of course, you go beyond. You improve your equipment. 
and even go to commercial equipment, transceivers, which would cost anything between $500 to $1,000. And that gives you a greater range of experimenting. And you talk to people. And also nowadays, with uh, even more developed uh, technology in amateur radio, we go to the digital modes. My good friend Kusal Lapa will expand on that. And I would like to touch on one aspect without taking too much time as to the experimental side of amateur radio or the possibility that we get through amateur radio. You see, uh, if you take a high frequency transmitting, uh, transmitting a signal from Sri Lanka to a foreign country using the ionosphere, there are certain factors that, uh, that uh, determine how well our signals will transmit. Of course, the time of day, the effects of the solar, uh, solar radiation on the ionosphere. Now that will change from year to year on a solar cycle, 11 years, some people say 10 years cycle from maximum to a minimum. And during high solar periods, you can transmit on higher frequencies and during the lower cycle on lower frequencies. Now that is what radio amateurs learn and experience and gain experience over the years. Now, I was wondering one day, how if suddenly this situation changes, for instance, during an eclipse, suddenly there is for about three or four minutes an artificially, or I, I wouldn't say artificially, or something like you create night during the day for a few minutes because the sun gets covered. And, you know, then the solar radiation on the ionosphere will diminish. And then nighttime conditions should prevail. That was my thinking. Should prevail during those three, four minutes during a solar eclipse. And depending on amateur radio, you can cover signals up to about 4,500 kilometers, bouncing it off the ionosphere. So even if I don't experience a solar, <clears throat> a total eclipse in Sri Lanka, I should be able to transmit bouncing my signal off the ionosphere and go to the other side of the uh, eclipse zone, thereby creating communications which are not possible during a normal time of day. So this was fascinating for me to experiment. As far as I know, nobody in Sri Lanka at the time had done so. But my thinking about it, I thought, okay, let me experiment. And for my good luck, in 1983, or is it 84, there was a total eclipse at about 2.42 uh, in the afternoon. And for three minutes, there was like evening. Suddenly at 2.30 in the afternoon, you get the conditions of late evening. And then the frequencies that you can use will certainly come down nighttime conditions artificially or for a little while simulated during daytime. So using my transmitter, I directed signals towards the ionosphere over the eclipse zone. And at this time, the eclipse was over central India from about Hyderabad going on to Yemen, that area. So my signals, I listened two or three days before the eclipse and then during the eclipse and after the eclipse, two or three days each. And then I was amazed to find how signals started appearing during the eclipse and after the eclipse, a minute or so after the eclipse, it would totally disappear and the usual daytime conditions would appear. Now, this was absolutely fascinating. I didn't have sophisticated laboratory equipment, but using my little transmitter and my imagination and thinking logically what I could do, I was able to gain that experience, an absolutely fascinating experience. Now, I stated that just as an example of what our young scientists could do if you have the ability 
to transmit, experiment with signals right from low frequencies right up to the gigahertz area of satellites and communications. So we as radio amateurs and members of the Radio Society would like to open that world to you so that you will be empowered even more in your scientific thinking and experimenting. And one thing more, amateur radio, I don't ever like to say that amateur radio is a hobby. Although we certainly do derive great satisfaction and joy through the results of our exper experiments. Now, one such instance was when the tsunami struck Sri Lanka, all communications along the coast of Sri Lanka got completely disrupted. And we as radio amateurs thought, surely this is our hour. We could go into these areas and provide communications. So what we did was taking two transmitters, we sent a team comprising of Mr. Kusalap, I will speak to you, and also three other people. We sent them up. We were going to send them to Trinka, uh, to Tissa Maharama or the Deep South because we heard that that whole area was devastated. And then what happened was, just as at midnight we were about to leave, we got a call from the Prime Minister's office. By the way, we had sent a message saying that we can offer our services. So the message, the call was, we have got this message. Can you really help? There is no electricity, nothing. And you say you can help in communications? We said, yes. All we need is your permission, your authority to go there and do that. We have our own equipment. We have two or three car batteries and we can sustain communications for at least three or four days until the authorities come up with something else. So we went in and we created that link. Kusal and his friends went through the island, Sri Lanka, through Tanamal Villa and reached Hambantota because they couldn't go along the coast, which was totally, there was total destruction there and the roads were impassable. 20 minutes after reaching Hambantota, the radio signal start, started crackling and our team was invited to the Prime Minister's disaster room to communicate, establish communications between Hambantota and the temple trees because Hambantota had an estimated death toll of 10,000 people. And we also set up stations in Gaul, in Mathara, and also in Panama. And we were able to provide that communication. Now, can you see how the enthusiasm and the self-teaching, the interest of amateur radio operators saved the day for Sri Lanka during our darkest hour? And similar experiences have taken place during floods. The, late, the closest was in 2017, when Hambantota and uh, 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 oh, the other side of uh, um, the Singaraja uh, forest, I think uh, I forget the name of the place, the GS division was totally cut off by uh, due to landslides and the breaking of fiber optic cables which linked Hambantota to this area. And we were called upon to establish a link between uh, this area and Hambantota. And again, we were airlifted from Ratnapura and two of our members were airdropped there and two more, including myself at Ratnapura. And again, within half an hour, we provided that link. So now what I'm trying to demonstrate to you or tell you is what amazing things that normal civilians, without the patronage of anyone, but your personal funds and your experience can do for this country. And we would like the youth, the young experimenters, the scientists of Sri Lanka, to look into amateur radio and see how it can enhance your knowledge. Thank you very much for the time given to me to introduce amateur radio to you, to give some understanding of what amateur radio is. Thank you and all the best for this evening's program. Thank you. For that informative session. So, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've been eagerly waiting for has finally arrived.
It is now time for the highlight of today's event, the keynote speech. I would like to invite our distinguished speaker, Mr. Kusalepa, to give our uh, your participants an introduction to ham radio communication. Um, very good evening to you. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes, Kusal. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so um, today I will give a brief introduction and overview of uh, what amateur radio is, uh, why one should uh, look at amateur radio, what are the benefits you can get, uh, the process of uh, getting the license and uh, how it can enhance your career, uh, enhance your knowledge, etc. So what actually is uh, amateur radio? Uh, amateur radio is a global community of uh, ham radio users uh, who use radio transmitters and receivers to communicate with each other across the street, can be in a local area or around the world, in other countries, and even with people in space. You have the chance to communicate even with astronauts in the International Space Station. It's the use of radio frequency spectrum for non-commercial exchange of messages, wireless experimentation, self-training as a means of recreation, contesting radio sport, it's known, and most importantly, as a means of emergency communication. When other communications fail, amateur radio is available to provide uh, communication, emergency communication facilities until ordinary communication uh, facilities are restored. So what is the worldwide status given to amateur radio? Amateur radio is a recognized service by the International Telecommunication Union. The ITU, it's a specialized agency of the UN, which is responsible for, the, for coordinating telecommunication operations and services throughout the world. So the ITU has allocated a number of frequency bands to the amateur service, dedicated to the amateurs and some other bands shared with other services. There are about 3 million amateur radio license holders worldwide. We have in Sri Lanka about 300,000 license holders and out of them, I believe about 50 to 100 are active amateur radio operators. It's a regulated service. Regulated means the service is regulated by the governments and telecom regulatory authorities. You need a license to transmit and it's a non-commercial service. It's purely for non-commercial use only. That means you can't do business over this amateur radio service. So what are the reasons uh, for getting involved in amateur radio? You can communicate with people all over the world. It's a fascinating service that allows people to communicate uh, with each other all over the world without relying on third party infrastructure. You can learn about electronics, communication technology, radio wave propagation, how radio waves behave in the atmosphere. You can experiment with new ways to communicate, build new radios, self-training and technical investigations. If you wish, you can participate in competitions. There are contests like, say, over a weekend um, to see how many contacts you can make. Some people are interested in that. It provides emergency communication during times of disaster. And it's a challenging and rewarding skill. It's a great way to make new friends. It's a worldwide community and an incredibly social endeavor.
so what's special about ham radio it gives you the ability to communicate across the country across the globe and space including astronauts and through satellites there are dedicated satellites for ham radio operators you can build an experiment with electronics antennas digital modes of communication study radio communication theory radio wave propagation building radios etc you can enjoy dx contacts dx contacts means long distance contacts talking to ham radio operators from distant countries using your own equipment it opens the door to new friendship with likely minded people over the air and through contact with local ham radio community typical amateur radio operators come from all walks of life they can be students engineers doctors teachers farmers retired people amateur radio is open to all of them amateur radio also has contributed to technology in many ways for developing new technologies amateur radio operators have been at the forefront of developing new technologies such as single sideband modulation it's a type of modulation radio modulation radio signal modulation used in high frequency communication frequency modulation fm bands you know is used for radio broadcasting as well and digital signal processing applications as well these technologies are now used in a wide variety wide range of commercial and military applications they have pioneered new pioneered new communication techniques such as packet radio satellite communication and emergency communication they have contributed made significant contributions to scientific research they have helped to track satellites and other spacecraft uh, help to study the earth's ionosphere how radio waves behave and develop new radio propagation models these propagation models are used in radio network planning for communication systems so how can amateur radio enhance your knowledge and skills it's a great way to learn about electronics radio propagation and communication theory it can teach you computer programming and antenna design and other technical skills while involved in this service in addition to technical skills amateur radio can also help you to develop your problem solving skills troubleshooting and communication skills when you are communicating with other amateur radio operators around the world you need to communicate clearly and concisely so engaging in this service helps you to achieve all this and can amateur radio help your career certainly it can give you the technical skills and experience that are needed for many jobs in electronics telecommunication and related fields it helps you to network with people in your field many amateur radio operators are employed in the technology industry by networking with other amateur radio operators you can learn about the potential job opportunities as well especially soft skills amateur radio can help you to develop the soft skills that are needed for success in any career such as problem solving troubleshooting and communication skills as you may know like people involved in technology they may not be the best they may not have the best of communication skills but being involved in amateur radio helps you to develop that um, especially like microphone skills when you talk to other ham radio operators across the globe that will enhance your language skills because you need to speak in english and uh, speak confidently with another remote party so these skills are highly valued by all employers in all industries it helps to learn about stem subjects in a fun way especially for students because you can 
experiment with gadgets, radios and stuff in your own time, in any way you are interested. It helps you to develop leadership skills as well. You can participate in amateur radio clubs and organizations. You can serve as office bearers in a radio club, lead a team of operators in an emergency situation, or teach new operators and mentor them how to use radio equipment, which will develop your leadership skills. And you also have the chance to give back to your community. They often volunteer their time to provide emergency communication support and other services to their communities. So this can be a rewarding way to use your skills and give back to the others. So basically, what do you need for amateur radio communications? First, you will need a license from the government. How you can obtain a license, we will talk in detail later on. With the license, you will get an amateur radio call sign. The call sign is used to identify yourself when you communicate with another party. You always use your amateur radio call sign. It's a combination of about six letters and numbers, and the first two or three letters are unique to each country. For instance, the Sri Lankan amateur radio call signs start with the letter the number and letter 4S. And these, these numbers are allocated by the International Telecommunication Union for different countries. You will need a radio transceiver and an antenna. So these are the basic things you will need for amateur radio communications. So what are the types of amateur radio equipment um, you use? To give a few examples, there are portable or what you call handheld radios like this, what you generally call walkie-talkies. Then you get the mobile radios. These can serve as desktop radios as well or fit it into a vehicle. And then you have the base station radios. Usually they are high frequency radios like this, which gives you the ability to communicate all over the world using high frequency radio waves. So a variety of equipment are there. This is just a few basic types of equipment uh, used in amateur radio. And in addition, there are other accessories and connecting computers to the radios and lots of things you can do. So what are the radio frequencies used for amateur radio. So particular po portions of the radio frequency spectrum are allocated for amateur radio. So I have just given the, an example of different frequency portions dedicated for amateur radio in different frequency bands. If you see 70 centimeter, so this is in the UHF band, 430 to 440 megahertz. And they can be used with these modes. These modes means the type of modulation allowed. For instance, a very popular band for long distance communication is the 20 meter band, which is in the 14 megahertz range, 14 to 14, 350 megahertz, using upper side band modulation. You can communicate with other countries as well. So different frequency bands, a part of it is allocated for, for amateur radio use. You will get to learn more about it in the uh, future sessions of this workshop series. A brief note about am amateur radio repeater. So what actually is amateur radio repeater? For example, if you have a handheld radio and you want to talk to another person on another side of the mountain, the radio communication path is blocked due to a mountain. So in such situations to expand the radio coverage, we have radio repeaters. They are usually uh, located on high elevations like mountain tops or high buildings. And what they do is uh, when someone transmits, the signal is picked up by the radio repeater. It's amplified and retransmitted back 
in another frequency. So that increases the range of the radio uh, coverage. So there are dedicated repeaters for amateur radio use. And in Sri Lanka, there are a few. Radio Society of Sri Lanka maintains some of them. Two important repeaters we have in Yatiantota and on top of Pitrutaragal and several others as well. High frequency radio. Mm -hmm. High frequency is generated the frequency band between 3 and 30 megahertz. If I briefly go back to the previous slide. Um, from here up to about here, 10, meg 10 meter band to about 80 or 160 band. So these are the high frequency bands. And these frequencies can be used for communicating communication for long distances. So the property of high frequencies is when you transmit in one of those frequency bands, the radio signals are bounced back by the ionosphere. They are reflected back by the ionosphere and then it can be again reflected back by the earth. So there can be multiple hops like this. It enables to communicate long distances. So that's how high frequency radios behave. And if you have a radio set up at your home and using a high frequency transmitter, you can basically talk all over the world depending on the propagation condition and time of the day. And you can use a transceiver like this, and this gives you the ability to con uh, communicate with another, another ham radio operator in another country, using your own equipment and at the receiving also the other ham radio operator's equipment, nothing in between, no other infrastructure. It's a direct contact between two of you uh, using your own, own equipment. So that's the beauty of high frequency radio. These are especially useful for em emergency communications as well to communicate in over long distances. So what are the types of communication you have in ham when you uh, communicate with other ham radio operators? You can communicate using radio telegraphy or what they what's commonly called as Morse code or continuous wave. You can use voice communication, just like you talk on the telephone using frequency modulation, single sideband modulation or digital mobile radio. And there are digital modes as well, like FT8, RTTY or PSK31, where you connect a computer to your amateur radio transmitter and send data signals. And you can also use slow scan television, SSTV, where you can send a picture across using your ham radio equipment. So these are the different ways where you can communicate uh, over the radio waves. So let's uh, see some details about continuous wave or Morse code. It is still used there are hundreds of amateur radio operators that use the Morse code. It's a very efficient mode of communication with simple equipment for long distances and uh, with very little transmit power. Now, learning Morse code is not compulsory to become a ham radio operator, but it's an optional thing and it's not a difficult thing to learn. If you can spend 15 to 20 minutes a day within a month, you can master the whole alphabet in Morse code. And hundreds of operators still communicate using Morse code. Radio telephone in the most popular form of communication with ham radio operators, that's voice communication, just like you speak on the telephone. It's a very pleasurable, way to talk with people, having direct person-to-person -person contact via, uh, via amateur radio. There are analog voice modes that we use like FM or single sideband. And there are digital voice modes as well, 
like digital mobile radio, D star, and system fusion. I will not go much into details of these uh, future sessions. Uh, we will have some more details about these uh, different modes, uh, digital modes. So what, what basically amateur radio operators talk on air? You can have a casual conversation about your families, weather, hobbies, matters of mutual interest. It can be technical topics, such as uh, the type of equipment you use, the modifications you have done to your radios, the antennas you have built, radio propagation conditions, and it does not need to be um, limited to radio related. Like it can be, if you have done something with your computers or if you have done, uh, if you had a problem in your vehicle and you have done a modification, all this can be discussed over amateur radio. And also certain types of things are not allowed to be discussed on amateur radio. Political discussions, religious discussions, business, commercial discussions, third party messages are not allowed. In Sri Lanka, some countries allow third party messages. I cannot tell that uh, uh, my neighbor wants to pass a message to your neighbor, to an, another ham radio operator. So that becomes a third party message, unless it's really a uh, critical thing like a medical emergency. Obscene language not allowed and matters related to national security not allowed. So one thing you have to be mindful is, unlike in a telephone conversation where you talk one to one and nobody else is able to listen in radio waves, the frequencies are open and anybody tuning a radio into that frequency will be able to listen to what you are talking. So it's very important to keep that in mind and uh, have your conversation in such a way so that uh, everybody is listening and uh, you do not uh, violate the uh, rules and regulations. A brief note about digital modes in ham radio. There are different types of digital modes, FT8, PSK31, RTTY, JT65. So the digital communication, they use less bandwidth and can transmit signals with low transmit power. They are less susceptible to interference because digital signals can be filtered and decoded more easily than analog signals. They have redundant uh, data bits for forward data correction which improve the reliability of data being transmitted. These redundant bits of data can be used to correct errors at the receiving end. It can be used to transmit a variety of data, including text and images in digital modes. Wide range of software and hardware are available to support digital modes. This is just a screenshot of one of the uh, digital modes, the computer screenshot of FT8. And you can see uh, the radio frequency spectrum and uh, the software program used in digital modes. Slow scan TV, another method of communicating, sending pictures over air. It's a picture transmission method used by ham radio operators to transmit images over the air. It's a popular mode among amateur radio operators because it is a great way to share images with other radio amateur operators. The image is transmitted slowly. Usually it takes several seconds or even minutes to transmit a complete image because SSTV uses very narrow bandwidth, typically about three kilohertz of bandwidth. This is an example of uh, uh, some images sent from the International Space Station using SSTV. So how does uh, home amateur radio station look like? Uh, some pictures to give a few examples. So 
This is Sabah Radio Society President Taranga. So he says that this is his first amateur radio station. It was in his university hostel. He started with a single amateur radio transceiver. And to the right, you can see uh, Mr. Victor Gunitilaka, the Secretary of Radio Society, a very elaborate station, a lot of equipment which he has uh, acquired over the years. And also a very compact uh, radio based uh, radio, amateur radio station in a desk. Uh, this belongs to a fellow Sri Lankan Asanta. He is now living in Canada. You can see two LCD screens, a transceiver here, ICOM transceiver, another transceiver, an antenna tuner, power supplies, and a computer. So you can start small with a single handheld radio and gradually build up. It depends on your interest and how passionate about uh, amateur radio. Echo link. Echo link is another way to communicate over amateur radio. It's using internet and amateur radio together. It's a voice over internet system that connects amateur radio repeaters and users around the world. It allows user to, users to communicate with each other over the internet using their amateur radio equipment. There are over 100,000 Ecolink nodes in over 150 countries. You can connect with hams all over the world. And when you use Ecolink, you will be transmitting in a remote location. And therefore, you need an amateur radio license and an internet uh, connection to use this service. So uh, an example of how Ecolink is used. Now, uh, I, uh, for example, I can use Ecolink software on my PC here, and it's linked from internet to another uh, PC and a radio repeat in another country. And when I speak through the computer here, I don't need to have amateur radio equipment, but when I speak to my computer microphone using sound card, it's, it goes over the internet, to another country, which is uh, a station connected to a repeater and it's transmitted over there. And somebody, let's say traveling in a vehicle with a handheld radio would be able to communicate with me through this path. So basically, let's say if I'm in Australia, in Sydney, through a calling, I can connect to the repeater in Yati Antota or Pidrutalagala when they are connected to internet and somebody using a mobile or handheld radio will communicate through the repeater, Vyati Antara or Pidrutalagala and through internet with me here in another country. So this is an example of the screenshot of the Ecolink software. You can see uh, the number of stations given for each country which are on Ecolink and a uh, very interesting method of uh, using internet and ham radio together to communicate over there. WinLink. WinLink is another way of communicating using ham radio. It's a radio messaging system that uses amateur radio frequencies to provide interconnection services. And you can send emails, weather bulletins, emergency relief communications, or mass message relays. It's a valuable tool for emergency communication because it can be used to communicate even when the other communication systems fail. For example, if the whole internet in uh, internet in the whole country of Sri Lanka fails. With your equipment, if you can connect to a WinLink node, you will be able to send email messages around. There are servers uh, around the world and WinLink nodes. And the only thing you need is the WinLink software and ability to get connected to one of those no nodes. 
very useful to tool for emergency communication. So a brief overview of what WinLink is. So these are what I'm explaining are different methods ham radio uh, users use to communicate with each other, voice communication and other methods of communication. So in ham radio, there are different specialities. Not, not everybody will work on all the aspects of ham radio. Some of them, they can specialize on different aspects of ham radio. Uh, first one is what you call homebrew. Homebrew is designing and building your own equipment. It's a great way to learn more about radio technology and electronics. And you can modify your equipment, you can build from scratch. Some people specialize in antennas. They build new types of antennas for di different properties uh, needed for their different purposes or do the modifications. And some people are interested in contesting. Contesting is a competitive activity where amateur radio operators try to contact as many uh, other amateur radio operators as possible in a given period of time. Usually they are held over weekends and they are worldwide contests. And uh, there are awards and certificates given to uh, people who make the most number of contacts. So some people take great pleasure in participating in those contacts. It's a great way to uh, test your skills in radio communication and study of radio propagation. So some of the examples of projects that amateur radio operators might work on. You can be working on designing and building a new type of antenna or developing a new software program for digital modes of communication. You can spend your time uh, repairing, uh, modifying or constructing radio transceivers from scratch. Or you can be conducting an amateur radio net operation. We will go what an, uh, some, we will go into detail of what an amateur radio net is in the next slide. Or you can be participating in a radio contest. So different types of activities where ham radio operators can take part in. So what are amateur radio nets? So amateur radio nets are gatherings of amateur radio operators on a specific frequency and at a specific time. And they are typically organized by a net control operator who is responsible for managing the net. Uh, so what he, do, he or she does is like uh, he will um, invite for check-ins and people in that particular time on that particular frequency will check in, tell their call signs and check into the net. And later on, if you want to expand further, you can use the net uh, to go into further discussions on radio propagations, antenna design, pass emergency or medical traffic, uh, equipment construction, or it can be limited only for general check-ins. In Sri Lanka, like every day at 9 p.m., there is a, a radio society conducts a net and uh, the M radio operators checked in. It's conducted over one of the repeaters. And there are uh, other amateur radio nets where uh, conducted over high frequency bands where uh, ham radio operators from all over the world can check in. You can use echo link to check in as well for the uh, uh, radio society net in Sri Lanka. These are especially useful in emergency situations uh, to provide emergency services in the aftermath of natural disasters or other emergencies. Uh, so that's a brief description of amateur radio nets some pictures of different types of antennas that are used in amateur radio. So this is what, uh, what is known as the Yagi antenna. So these are directional antennas. So the radio waves you transmit from these types of antennas are concentrated on a particular direction. Uh, unlike an omnidirectional antennas where the radio frequencies are transmitted all over uh, in all the directions, these antennas can direct the signal to a particular direction. 
this is a magnetic loop antenna usually used in confined spaces if you don't have space to put up a good antenna you can use this and uh, especially useful for low power operation this is an example of a log periodic antenna log periodic antennas are generally used for different frequency bands this can be used in a range of frequency bands then you have the uh, what is commonly called as rubber ducky antennas. These are antennas fixed to handheld radios. Then you get the cubical cord type of antennas which you can use uh, for HF operations. And then they have uh, dipole, wire dipole antennas, a bit difficult to free, uh, see in this figure. These are wire antennas which are cut into a particular length uh, uh, to be resonant for that frequency. Very simple to uh, build these type of antennas. Then you get the vertical type antennas and the long wire antennas, which are called N-fed wire antennas, which you usually use with an antenna tuner. So just to give a brief introduction of different types of antennas that are used in amateur radio communication. So another, if, some of the events that the amateur radio operators uh, take part. So uh, an important event in the amateur radio calendar is the Jamboree on the air. So it's a worldwide event organized by the scout movement and girl guides that allows scouts and guides to communicate with each other using amateur radio. It's held in October uh, every year and the scouts and ham radio operators get together. The amateur radio operators set up stations and uh, facilitate the scouts to communicate uh, with other scouts. It's, it's a great opportunity to learn about ham radio, to both the scouts and the ham radio operators as well. And uh, uh, you can learn, to how, learn how to communicate with people uh, using ham radio. And it gives you the opportunity to make new friends from different backgrounds. Can, you can practice your communication and technical skills, teamwork skills in organizing the event and have fun. And uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to even for non-licensed amateurs to participate because um, in such events, under the guidance of an amateur radio operator, you can operate an amateur radio station, which will help you to learn the skills uh, and uh, to get an amateur radio license. So uh, we had the uh, Jamboree on the air this year as well. The Radio Society facilitated, uh, facilitated a few stations and uh, this is part of the promotional flyer we had for the uh, Jota event this year. Another event uh, every year the ham radio operators take part is the International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend. It's an annual event held on the third full weekend of August all over the world. So amateur radio operators from all over the world set up portable stations at lighthouses. It promotes the public awareness of lighthouses and also uh, it can uh, test your skills of how to quickly set up a portable stations. And it's a great uh, outing as well. It encourages people to get involved in amateur radio uh, and learn about new technologies. So this is a picture of this year's Lighthouse event. Uh, the team from Radio Society who uh, went to participate in uh, Dondra Lighthouse uh, this year an annual event uh, in August every year. So amateur radio and the International Space Station. So most of the astronauts abroad about the International Space Station have an amateur radio license. And there is an amateur radio station uh, in the International Space Station. And uh, these astronauts, they can use the ham radio station on uh, International Space Station to communicate with the uh, ham radio operators on the ground. 
and usually in their free time they use it uh, and in pre-scheduled times and lots of amateur radio operators have been able to talk to the astronauts uh, in the International Space Station. There is also a repeater in the International Space Station as well. So this picture uh, gives uh, the astronaut Doug uh, Wheelock who used amateur radio equipment to talk with ham radio operators. So it's another great opportunity to look forward uh, to communicate with uh, uh, astronauts in space. Amateur radio and satellite communication. So an amateur radio satellite is an artificial satellite. Most of the time they are built by amateur radio operators as well. And uh, these amateur radio set, uh, satellites work on uh, dedicated frequencies allocated to amateur radio operators. Some of them are known as OSCAR satellites, orbiting satellite carrying amateur radio acronym for that. Over 60 satellites, amateur radio satellites have been launched up to now. 20 of, about 20 of them are currently in operation. These satellites offer a wide variety of different communication capabilities, including voice, digital, and image communication. They can be used for educational and scientific purposes. They can be used for free by licensed amateur radio operators for voice and data communications. So uh, these satellites, the type of communication that uses amateur radio satellite is to relay the signals between amateur radio operators to the ground. They are typically placed on, uh, they are called low, LEO satellites, low Earth orbit, which means they orbit the Earth at an altitude of between 160 and 2000 kilometers. So when an amateur radio operator on the ground transmits a signal to the satellite, the satellite receives the signal and uh, then it retransmits it back to the earth. So it can be received by an amateur radio operator on the ground. Uh, he, he or she can be on the other side of the earth. So it allows amateur radio operators to communicate over long distances, even if they are on opposite sides of the earth. So uh, to give an example, the, one does not need a very complicated or expensive equipment to um, communicate using a amateur radio satellite. You can use a portable radio like this and connect it to an antenna and you need to know the time of uh, time the satellite is passing through and need to point it to the satellite and using an antenna like this. So usually the communication takes in two different frequency bands, generally UHF and VHF for, uh, for uplink and downlink frequencies. So this antenna, if you look, uh, there are short elements. So that is for UHF. It's a UHF Yagi and the longer elements are for VHF. So it's a dual band antenna, Yagi antenna. So that's the simplest way of communicating. You manually hold it and make a contact or you can use a automated uh, antenna which uh, automatically tracks the satellite. These are commercially available or it can be built as well. So once the relevant data to the path of the satellite are fed in, it can be a computer. Uh, or a small Raspberry Pi device, this antenna will automatically track the satellite and rotate using a motor. So uh, this is how amateur radio operators use uh, satellites to communicate uh, using the amateur radio satellites. A brief note about the HF beacon network, I will quickly go to the next slide. So HF beacons are radio transmitters uh, in high frequencies. They are located, uh, there are 
18 high frequency beacons located all over the world and uh, uh, Sri Lankan uh, there is one in Sri Lanka as well uh, with the call sign 4S7B the radio society hosts that uh, beacon in Sri Lanka which covers the south and southeast Asia region so the purpose of these beacons are they periodically transmit the radio signal on particular frequency bands in Morse code. Now, um, this can be used to assess the radio propagation conditions. For example, if you want to communicate, let's say there is a station in Japan here, you need to know whether the radio propagation conditions are good to communicate with Japan. So what you need to listen in is from Sri Lanka, you need to see whether you can receive the signal transmitted by this Japanese amateur radio beacon. If this signal is audible to you, that means the radio propagation path is good between Japan and Sri Lanka, and you can contact a lot of amateur radio operators. So that's the purpose of the beacons, to check the high frequency radio propagation conditions. And these 18 radio beacons are located uh, on different paths and uh, radio society. Um, holds it. So this beacon network uh, is available for commercial and amateur high frequency radio users to assess the conditions of the ionosphere. It, it, it is operated by the Northern California DX Foundation with support from the International Amateur Radio Union. 18 beacons located on five continents. Each beacon transmits once on each band, once every three, three minutes. 24 hours a day, and they can be used to assess the propagation conditions, identify when the radio bands are open for communication and determine the direction and distance uh, to a particular beacon. So the Radio Society of Sri Lanka operates and maintains the HF beacon for the South and Southeast Asia re uh, region. Another event amateur radio operators take part is amateur radio direction finding contest. They are also known as fox hunts. So amateur radio direction finding has many practical and recreational applications. It can be used to locate the source of radio interference or assist in a search and rescue operation or find hidden transmitters in fox hunt events or even track animals fitted with radio transmitters for research purposes. So it involves specialized skills, combining knowledge of radio signals, direction finding, re map reading, and compass skills of orienteering. These are some pictures of a direction finding contest held this year uh, by the Radio Society. So what was done is a radio transmitter is hidden in a particular location and it periodically transmits a signal. So the teams taking part need to find the location of the transmitter. The team that finds it first will get a prize. So um, these are the pictures of the teams that participated with the antennas. And what you basically do is you go to a particular location and you point the antenna and uh, turn it around to see the strongest signal. When you point it to a particular direction, the signal becomes stronger. So from that point on a map, you mark a line uh, to the direction of the strongest signal. Then you go to another location and do the same thing. You turn around the antenna. Uh, these are directional antennas and um, uh, point it to the strongest direction of the signal. And then from that location also you mark a line. So eventually these lines interact at one point on the map. And that point is where uh, the transmitter is located. So uh, so it's a great way as a, as a recreational activity to practice your skills. Uh, to find hidden transmitters and for other purposes as well, such as locating a source of radio, uh, radio interference as well. 
So I have been explaining different types of activities the ham radio operators take part. A brief note about the Radio Society of Sri Lanka, further details will be given later on. The Radio Society of Sri Lanka was founded in 1950. It's a non-profit organization and it represents the interests of amateur radio operators uh, for the, uh, before the regulatory authorities like the Telecommunication Regulatory Commission or the Defense Ministry. It is a member society of the International Amateur Radio Union and the Radio Society organizes workshops, field activities, meetings, and fellowship events among amateur radio operators. The members of the Radio Society are ready to provide emergency communications if the, when the need arises. And uh, members also have the opportunity to participate in RSSL events and activities. And uh, for those who would like to get a ham radio license, it's a, there is a good support network. You can get uh, the support of experienced amateur radio operators who are members of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka. And this is the website address. And uh, this is a picture of the stamp. Actually, this stamp was issued in 1983 to mark the 55th anniversary of amateur radio in Sri Lanka. The amateur radio activities started in 1928 in Sri Lanka and this stamp was issued in 1983. The International Amateur Radio Union. So the International Amateur Radio Union uh, it was founded in 1925 and it comprises of 172 national uh, member societies. It plays a vital role in protecting and promoting the interest of amateur radio. It has the sector membership of the International Telecommunication Union and it participates in the relevant ITUR. Uh, ITUR stands for International Telecommunication Union's Radio Communication Sector Study Groups and working parties. And the Radio Society is a representative member society uh, of Sri Lanka in IARU. Uh, in fact, recently the World Radio Communication Conference was held in Dubai and the IARU had a delegation of about eight uh, representatives uh, who participated in the uh, World Radio Communication uh, Conference in Dubai. Uh, looking after and promoting the interest of uh, amateur radio in that conference. A very important topic, uh, amateur radio emergency communications. Radio am uh, amateurs can swiftly and effectively respond to provide communication services, emergency communication services using their own equipment. Uh, because they have the skills and the equipment they can quickly deploy. And uh, two examples of past uh, events that uh, the radio society, uh, the ham radio operators uh, had participated was once was in 2004 tsunami. It was facilitated by the ICT agency. Uh, the radio amateurs provided emergency communication services, including a high frequency radio link from Hambantata to Colombo. Uh, the Colombo station was at uh, Temple Trees. So this, this communication link was the only communication method from Colombo to Hambantota uh, for a particular period of time because all the communication links to that region was destroyed. Uh, even the mobile phones were not operating. The base stations did not have power. The landlines were disrupted. So. Uh, the ham radio operators were able to provide these services uh, to facilitate the disaster relief operations. Then in 2017, again, emergency communication services were provided uh, to Rat Ratnapur and Kalavan areas in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Air Force. The Air Force uh, facilitated the transport of um, amateur radio operators from Colombo to these locations. They provided their helicopters and uh, uh, the members of the radio society went to these locations and uh, provided emergency communications services during the 2017 uh, floods. 
So how do you obtain an amateur radio license? To give a brief detail, to get a license in Sri Lanka, you need to pass a test administrated by the radio, uh, Telecommunication Regulatory Commission. There are three levels of licenses, novice, general, and advanced. The novice license is the entry level license and easiest to obtain. Uh, novice and general class, both examinations are multiple choice questions, MCK type exams, advanced is a written type exam. And there are two, uh, two uh, papers uh, one has to sit. One is on electronics and radio communication theory and licensing conditions and operating practices and procedures, th those two. And uh, if one wants, one can sit to all three exams. It depends on your knowledge and skill. If you have been in the radio communication, if you have studied radio communications before, it's not difficult to pass the general class license as well. And if you get these licenses, you have the ability to later upgrade. If you get a noise license, you can later upgrade to general and advanced. So these different types of licenses give different uh, privileges, different handbands, access, and different levels of uh, allowed power to transmit. And there is an optional um, test, the most code test. Uh, this is uh, for advanced class licenses only, you need to be able to communicate in most code license, uh, in most code uh, as well. So how do you get started um, if you want to become ham radio operator? You can join the radio society, you can participate in amateur radio events, can, and while doing that, you can prepare for the examination. There are lots of resources uh, available on internet, YouTube, guidebooks available, and importantly, you have the chance to be mentored by a licensed amateur radio operator. Uh, members of the radio society are cheered to provide the guidance if you want past papers uh, or they will hold um, the classes close to an examination uh, all these are available for those who are aspiring to be amateur radio operators okay we are coming to the end of this presentation there was an excellent article on ham radio published in the IEEE Communications Magazine uh, in October. It's part of uh, three, uh, three articles. The first part, how amateur radio launched the information age and brought uh, high tech to life. Uh, it was written by uh, Theodore Rappo, uh, is a chair professor of electrical and computer engineering at New York University. Uh, this article is available for download for free. And this is the link. I will copy this link to the chat window in a while. And um, today I got to know that the second part of the article also appeared in uh, last month's IEEE Communication Magazine. So I will put that link also. You can download it and read it pleasurely and uh, a very good article uh, on ham radio. So that brings the end to my presentation of a brief overview of ham radio. And if you have questions, uh, can probably, I think there are two short sessions on radio society and um, how to obtain the license. Probably after that, we can have a discussion and question and answer session. Thank you, sir, for that informative session. As a ham radio enthusiast, you may be wondering how to get a ham radio license. Mr. Tan, Mr. Tan Clicker is ready to take you through that process. Without further ado, I would like to invite our distinguished speaker, Mr. Tarang Prem Tilaka, to deliver his presentation, How to Get a Ham Radio License. The spotlight is yours, sir. Okay, can everyone hear me clearly? Am I audible enough? Can you guys hear me, Yasiru? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. 
Okay, right, thanks. I hope you can see see my screen as well. <laughs> yes, sir, we can. Right, right, right. Anyways, um, well, after after Kusal's uh, descriptive presentation, I don't have much to left much left to uh, uh, explain more on on this topic. But I'll uh, quickly pick up on a few points where Kusal left, and uh, we'll carry forward uh, uh, on those lines. So just just before entering how to become a radio become a radio amateur, uh, let me just explain. Let me just uh, mention that we all want to, uh, you know, how important ex expanding our circle or our network is when it comes to, uh, you know, when 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 you are trying to enter the industry or when you are trying to uh, get promoted or expand your capabilities, skills, and all that. So this is this is. Mainly, this is why I uh, joined, uh, or why I thought of becoming a radio amateur. And even before that, uh, you know, as many of you do, uh, you all do volunteering stuff. You all are involved in different clubs from your universities, from your workplaces, from your villages, and uh, in the society. So that you know, why do you why do you uh, take part in such voluntary activities and get involved in such organizing such events and uh, yeah and uh, uh, you know do a community service uh, so why do you do all that for me i do such things one purely for my pleasure true and of course it gives maybe uh, unintentionally that allows you to expand your circle expand your network get you 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 will get more chances to uh, you know connect with different people from all sorts of life all walks of life as kusal mentioned in his presentation so that's uh, you know ham radio or amateur radio is one such great service uh, where you will get such opportunities to connect with different people from all around the world and uh, probably you must have understood that this is too much to jam into a one hour two hour session so that is why we have curated a few uh, more sessions in the future on different topics so we will provide you more information and guidance on uh, how to become not only on how to become in and become in a radio amateur but uh, we'll give you ha some hands on experience on testing out different communication methods uh, different protocols some stuff that you may have uh, seen only in simulations in your universities or may not have seen at all. So that's where the radio amateurs can help you. Uh, certain stuff that you have only read about or only have heard about in your university degrees courses, uh, we can provide you with practical and hands-on experience on how to carry out those stuff and see the results real time. So. Uh, we i invite on behalf of the radio society i invite all of you to uh, stay in touch with this program stay in touch with the ieee uh, uh, young professionals and uh, uh, continue with this program so and it personally it gives me great pleasure to uh, you know finally do something with the ieee uh, after i left my university as well I'm happy to see my uh, a few of my colleagues also joined in today right back to the topic uh, so as the you know speaking on behalf of the radio society so we want specifically you uh, to join the hobby because you have the technical expertise and you have had exposure to these uh, some of these terms and some of these uh, you know equipment so it's very easy for you to get you know go uh, a smooth journey in ham radio it's not necessary to be to to be a telecommunications or an electronics graduate or an engineer or a professional but it helps but it helps not only for you, but it helps the community as well, because uh, you know you 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 we you know after you become a ham, uh, once you enter the community, you you know your expertise will help some of the youngsters to grow you know to to uh, nourish them as well. So that helps a lot, even though you don't you may not even realize. And this hobby coincides and overlaps with some other different uh, hobbies as well, like uh, could be astronomy. Or it could be uh, radio controlled, uh, you know, RC planes, RC sports, and all that, and uh, or even four by four sports as well. So the if you are into uh, you know uh, communications and uh, 
uh, you know, wireless communications stuff. So this, you know, we can provide, or the amateur radio can provide uh, a great pathway to, uh, you know, excel in those areas as well. And so some of you uh, may have had, may have built transmitters, receivers, uh, or even read about building those stuff, building those uh, circuits when you are, uh, you know, reading electronics books and articles or magazines. But you may also have heard that building such stuff without or violating the rule, violating the law of the clan uh, can lead, you know, can drive you into trouble. So by becoming a radio amateur, uh, you will have, uh, you know, access to experiment and build your own transmitters or your your own antennas without violating the law and also uh, you know making some good use of them not just building and throwing it away but you can have some good use of it also <clears throat> by becoming a ham this applies to me as well by becoming a radio amateur this gives you an opportunity to <clears throat> opportunity to develop your language and communication skills you know, my English is not good. So by, you know, even though I don't, uh, I may not be a master of it, I will have to communicate in English if I'm going to communicate with someone from, let's say, the USA or the UK. So, or even Japan or Indonesia, Malaysia, wherever, even in India. So, so even though you, you like it or not, you will have to use the uh, language, the second language, I mean. So, uh without even your 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 knowledge your your english will improve your communication skills will improve your uh, microphone shyness and your stage fear will leave you so that helps you to build your personality as well these these are a few points that i picked up from kusal's presentation i will uh, uh, go to my uh, points later but just let me elaborate on a few of these points uh, before going there and also, yeah, um, so since you are either professionals working in electronics or in the telecommunication industry or being engineers, electronics engineers or students, graduates, whatever, so you get a real world challenge, you know, it, during this program, we hope to give you real world challenges know by to, uh, planning and building your own communications network sometimes maybe uh, uh, we we are drafting some tasks at this as we speak so we will give you some hands on exp uh, you know experiences as well during the program and as the rssl as the radio society uh, we need you just to emph emphasize one more time we need you to be uh, one of you know join join us as well because uh, we have an excellent team of radio amateurs uh, with us as the at the radio society who work on uh, repeaters antennas maintenance stuff deployments and all that but this needs to continue and that is where we need you so we i invite uh, all of you uh, to join the amateur radio service and uh, join the radio society as well and uh, you know uh, so why you know uh, build yourself build your careers and uh, while serving the community as well so and also you may have uh, you know during the presentation you may have had this uh, idea or this weird thought that uh, why do you need amateur radio in this digital age where you can uh, dial in a, a phone number and talk to some someone from the other corner of the world but uh, let me pose you one question. When was the last time you dialed a random, random number and talked to someone from the other part of the world uh, and discussed something, uh, things related to a project that you are working on or, uh, uh, or something, uh, you know, something interesting, something that could help you and him uh, in his projects, in his career, in his uh, workplace or in his studies? When was the last time you dialed in and uh, uh, talked or discussed something about that uh, over the over the phone, right? So th that's the difference. 
even though you have the uh, you, you have all the all the facilities all the access to mobile phones and uh, computers emails and all that uh, it's not every day that, that we do and and the chances are you will be uh, <laughs> you will be marked as a uh, you know if you start dialing random numbers on the phone and uh, talk, start talking to people you will be uh, you know marked as a lunatic uh, without uh, going any further but it's not like this that in in, in ham, ham radio that's the difference so if you uh, if you can find someone from the other part of the world and discuss uh, about a project that you are working on he will also have this experience because these are like minded people they are people like you so the chance that there's a there's a very high probability of finding someone like you from the other part right whereas in uh, in a phone communication or a phone conversation a random conversation the chances are very thin i hope you get what i mean and so how do you become a radio amateur uh, in that sense as kusal mentioned the ra the, the radio amateur license in sri lanka is issued by the telecommunications regulatory commission trcsl and in order to uh, obtain a license you need to sit for a sit for the examination again conducted by the trc and uh, in collaboration with the uh, ministry of examinations and uh, after passing the exam <clears throat> uh, i i won't go into the de too much details about the exam because uh, it's very easy to pass for all of you you all have had uh, studied physics and uh, studied the basic electronics not basic but uh, more uh, uh, detailed electronics in your graduate courses uh, the only thing that you may need to master a little bit is uh, the operating practices and licensing conditions which as the radio society we will provide you enough guidance and help to pass that exam both the exam both the papers electronics and also uh, uh, the operating practices both both papers so after passing the exam you will have to apply for the license and uh, subject to a clearance process by the ministry of defense because this is dealing with the spectrum rf spectrum and uh, the ministry of defense does a uh, security check on you and uh, declares that it is safe <clears throat> and it is uh, okay to issue you a license and you have not violated violated uh, any rule any laws in the country where where uh, where issuing a license to transmit will be uh, <coughs> something of public some a matter of public security so subject to a security clearance by the ministry of defense you will be issued with the license uh, uh, depending on the license class that you applied could be a novice class general class or an advanced class license and the advanced class license uh, advanced class exam as a mos test mos uh, communication component for the other two novice and general there is no mos requirement at the moment and you will be issued with a three letter call sign uh, with some prefix in the in the in um, you know before your call sign either 4s5 4s6 or 4s7 and another three letters and that call sign is unique to you only you in this world will have that call sign kusal has the call sign 4s7ke and victor has 4s7vk two letters and i have 4s6tmp and we don't find any other 4s7ke in the world other than kusal so that is unique to you and uh, the radius, so i i will uh, ask victim our secretary to uh, we do for the community uh, so i will stop at this point and hand over to the organizers uh, and uh, victor will explain more on the radio society in his uh, in this uh, brief talk <clears throat> and thank you over to you sir take it up Thank you, sir, for that informative session. For the final presentation of today's lineup, I'd like to invite our speaker, Mr. Vinay, again to introduce the radio 
Historical Society of Sri Lanka, which is a community of seasoned and budding enthusiasts of Prem, Ham Radio and uh, what it has to offer to you. The spotlight is yours, sir. Yeah, good evening once again. And uh, to say a few words about the Radio Society of Sri Lanka, it acts as the uh, national uh, unit of amateur radio, representing amateur radio, and also the representative of the International Amateur Radio Union. Now, where you are concerned, if you'd like to join the Radio Society, you can go to our website, www.rssl.lk, or just uh, Google uh, your search for the Radio Society of Sri Lanka, Radio Society of Sri Lanka, and you'll be able to, um, or you'll be able to uh, join us. Uh, the applications are there, and the details are there, and we'll be very happy to welcome you uh, to the Radio Society of Sri Lanka. Uh, well, we charge a very nominal fee. If you are a licensed radio amateur, you have the opportunity of taking part in decision making as a cooperate member, or you have uh, an associate member status uh, until you get your license. So everyone is welcome and they have a place in the Radio Society. In addition to that, um, the Radio Society uh, will help you to become a radio amateur. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, every year we try to get the TRC to hold the examination every year. And uh, we help you by having a series of classes, orientation classes, experiences, and also for some people who are not familiar too much with electronics, uh, the basics of electronics, enough to get through uh, your examination. So uh, that's what we do. And then, of course, we have, as far as possible, we like to have a meeting once a month. At uh, We have it at Otter's Aquatic Club. And on a Thursday or a Wednesday every month, we have not been having that many uh, meetings often on live meetings, but uh, having uh, Zoom meetings. So you can join us and then uh, uh, discuss and we'll tell you what the Radio Society is doing on that current occasion or whatever. So you're most welcome to join us and we'll give you every uh, help uh, that we can and you can communicate with us so that you can one day get your amateur radio license and we'll guide you through the various spaces of uh, becoming a radio amateur. So once again, we welcome you wholeheartedly. It's open to everyone, whether you are a radio amateur or not. If you're interested in amateur radio, you can become an associate member. And if you're a licensed amateur, you can join as a corporate member, can hold office uh, positions and also uh, take part in decision making, in voting and things like that. And also, as uh, you see, uh, we have annual events, uh, I think Pusal and also uh, Taranga uh, touched on them. Uh, we have the Jambri on the air, helping uh, young radio amateurs, uh, rather scouts uh, to uh, talk to each other locally and internationally using our equipment and also uh, when disaster strikes or whether in emergencies, the radio society, we use our skills, the knowledge we have gained through experiences, experiments over the over peace time to jump in and give out our best to serve the community. And uh, we have been recognized for that. And uh, we, are, we take great pride in uh, doing that. And we invite all of you to make a difference through your knowledge and your enthusiasm and your uh, the results of your experiences to make a little difference in the community because you are radio amateurs. So that's what I like to do as the secretary of the Radio Society. Welcome you to the Radio Society. Extend that invitation and we'll embrace you and your knowledge and you can make a big difference to the amateur radio community because after all, you are our experienced people, not just um, you know people who are interested in radio, but who can contribute greatly to the development of radio and uh, transmissions and new technology using amateur radio. 
So thank you very much once again for giving me the chance to say something about the Radio Society and extend that invitation to all of you. Thank you. Thank you for that informative session. Uh, now we'd like to open the floor for a Q&A session. We invite you to raise any questions or doubts it you may have you know, about the content that was discussed right. today. To ensure that we have enough time to address as many questions as possible, we kindly ask you to keep your questions concise and to the point. You may unmute and direct your questions to the speakers or use the Zoom chat to raise your questions. Um, just to let you know, uh, I have copied the link to the IEEE articles in the chat window for you to download. Hi, Kusal, uh, Victor, uh, and uh, for a very nice presentation. I would say that, you know, I'm very interested in joining. Uh, I think my membership is still pending. Uh, so uh, uh, the the balance session, if I have to take part for the balance session, uh, uh, I have. do I have to register uh, again or do I have to make only the payment to the bank? Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, yes, Aruna, we could hear you. I think someone from this uh, organizing committee will answer you. Uh, okay. Yasiru? Is Dushinta here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Dushinta. Uh, yeah. Um, after the awareness session, we will be sharing the PD details and uh, they can register through that one. Uh, then we can okay. uh, participate in the remaining sessions. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think, yeah. Mr. Harno, you got down. So you you will send it send it to me via email uh, uh, separate link to register for the balance sessions. Yeah, uh, we will uh, be uh, sending what whatever the email that you use for uh, registering for okay. the yeah. All right, all right. So then I have to register and the, make the payment uh, and send you the proof of payment. Then after that, I uh, you will send me the schedule for the next sessions. No. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much. That's what I wanted. Yeah, the participants can use this time to ask any questions regarding uh, whatever the presentations were around today. So uh, you can ask the uh, questions from the speakers um, regarding the ham radio communication, or else if you have any questions regarding the registration or and uh, about the workshop series, even you can ask them now. Uh, can I ask you about the 26th session? Uh, uh, I got a, uh, uh, I got registered for that also 26th uh, uh, workshop. Uh, 
so uh, I don't have to do anything directly. I can come and participate there, no, after registration. Uh, uh, no, I think I think there's some there's a mix up here. Aruna, uh, yeah. I think you're referring to the uh, the disaster preparedness drill, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, Aruna, that's a different program uh, organized by oh. the Radio Society. So this one is uh, organized by the IEEE. Uh, ah, okay, okay, Sri all Lanka, right. IEEE okay. Sri Lanka section. Yeah, oh. we are the knowledge partners of this program, and for that one, we will uh, uh, give you more details on the other channel. Uh, okay, communicate separately. No, okay, thanks. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Well, this question directed, uh, I don't know if it's, I think it's a direct message. So someone asks whether we have the MOD clearance form in English, in, in English. Uh, well, uh, the form is in Sinhala language, but you can fill that, fill the same form in English. Uh, it's not that difficult to translate uh, the, the Sinhala form into English even. But if you, if you find it difficult, uh, you can uh, fill in the form in uh, English language. That doesn't matter. This is regarding the MOD clearance form when you are applying for the license after you pass the exam. Saranga, uh, can I come in there? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Victor. I mean, the radius, uh, we haven't thought of it, but uh, I'm sure since we have developed more as a rather closer cooperation with the TRC, uh, hmm. I mean, translating that form into English uh, wouldn't be much of an issue. Shall we try doing that? I can speak to the TRC. I mean, just, I'm sorry, I'm bringing it up because you posed the question and uh, just crossed my mind. Uh, and of course, if you do it in English, uh, uh, we also should translate that into Tamil so that all three languages will have that form. So shall we try something like that, Kusalo? Uh, sorry, uh, Taranga? I think that yes, nice. we, yeah, that's good. That's great. That's great, actually. Yeah. And uh, the person who sent this message, if you find it difficult to translate it into uh, English, just uh, let us know. Contact us uh, directly. We will help you to fill in the form. Okay, uh, I believe that's all questions we have from the audience. Thank you, Mr. Taranga Prematilaka and Mr. Kusa Lefa and Mr. Uh, Victor Gunatilak answering and clearing their doubts. So uh, now let's take a moment to express the, uh, explore the details and what to do, what uh, do you expect from the sessions to come in this ham radio communication workshop series. As mentioned previously, the course is designed to cover both theoretical and hands-on aspects of ham radio location. We will be able to explore topics such as radio frequency wave propagation, location basics, and emergency communication strategies throughout this workshop series. There will also be uh, assessments such as quizzes, case studies and practical assignments for you to reinforce your knowledge to gain from the sessions and to ensure practical proficiency. By ensuring uh, facing these assessments, you will be able to earn a valuable IEEE's uh, credited certificate. 
By completing this course, you will be able to transform into a skilled ham radio operator capable of worldwide communication, providing crucial support during emergencies. To guide you through this enriching journey, we have a team of distinguished experts joined with us. Now, let me introduce you to our esteemed uh, team of instructors, Mr. Kusa Lapa, uh, a seasoned, licensed amateur radio operator with over 30 years of experience and the former honorary secretary of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Lapa has extensive knowledge in cellular, mobile, and mission critical communication. Mr. Ruan Abikon, a brilliant software engineer and architect with over two decades of experience. Uh, Ms. Abikon is a trailblazer in mobile network innovation. He, uh, his passion for amateur radio added a unique perspective to his technological prowess. Mr. Sandeep Sepal, a highly accomplished computer engineer with over 20 years of experience. Mr. Sepal is an expert in embedded system and mobile technologies. Additionally, he shares his knowledge as a visiting lecturer. Mr. Victor Gunatilaka, uh, a prominent luminary in a global radio community and seasoned DXer, Mr. Gunatilaka has uh, served as the president of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka and holds the position of technical at frequency management at the Voice of America. Mr. Taranga Prematilaka, uh, an accomplished electronic engineer specializing in, in DB designing and firmware, uh, firmware development. Mr. Prematilaka is the current president of the Radio Society of Sri Lanka and a visiting lecturer at Wyoming University. As you know, uh, as you saw, we have a, a carefully curated course for, for you to learn the uh, intricacies of ham radio communication. If you are interested in continuing with this workshop series, we invite you to register with us and make this uh, make the payment in order to secure your spot. The registration form link having the payment details is up on the screen. Uh, and you may scan this QR code to access the form link. And uh, now it will be Shared in the chat as well. Uh, it fast as we have a limited number of seats. Moving on, we would like to take a moment to express our gratitude to our esteemed speakers. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Victor Gunatilaka for sharing his valuable knowledge and expertise with us. Thank you once again, sir. And uh, we would like to extend our sincere appreciation to our guest speaker, Mr. Kusa Lapa, for sharing his valuable knowledge and expertise with us. Thank you once again, sir. Finally, uh, we would like to ex extend our sincere appreciation to our guest speaker, Mr. Uh, Taranga Tilaka, for sharing his valuable knowledge and expertise with us. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, we have shared a feedback form in this uh, Zoom chat now. Uh, also, you can scan the QR code on the screen to access the feedback form. We kindly request you to take a few minutes to fill it out. The feedback is extremely important to us as it helps us to continuously improve and provide you with better experience in the future. Before proceedings, let's take a group photo to remember this milestone of the commencement of the ham radio communication workshop series. I kind of request the audience and the OC members to switch on your cameras to take a group photo. Please make sure you use the, the virtual background we have sent you in the meeting invitation.
Um, let's wait another few seconds till everyone is ready. Okay, let's wait a few seconds. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, all right, everyone get ready. Uh, on the count of three, I'll give you a cue to smile and pause. Okay, one, two, three, say cheers. Okay, let's make sure we capture a good shot. Are we good to go, Prashinta? Yeah, yes, sir. We can go. Okay, thank you, everybody. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we came to the end of the workshop, it's time to express our gratitude to those who made this event possible. I would like to invite Ms. Dushinta Ramalingam, uh, program team lead, y 2 Pro, to deliver the word of thanks. Uh, Yanziru, uh, I hope you can hear me well. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Yanziru. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the IEEE y Twin Pro Organizing Committee, I'm honored to deliver the vote of thanks today. We have come to the end of today's session. I hope you all had a very informative and valuable evening today, as I did. First and foremost, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to our guest speakers, Mr. Tharanga Premathilaka, Mr. Uh, Victor Gunathilaka, and Mr. Kosa Erpa for accepting our invitation and gracing today's awareness session. I believe that everyone who joined today got a good understanding of ham radio communication and got an idea about what it has to offer to the community. A special acknowledgement goes to the Radio Society of Sri Lanka under the leadership of Mr. Taranga Premathilaka for their continuous support. From introducing speakers to assisting in uh, assist and to assisting in shaping the content of the workshop series, your collaboration has been instrumental in making this event a success. Additionally, we express our sincere thanks to Ms. Varnika Hippala, Chair of IEEE Young Professional Sri Lanka and the XCOM for their unwavering support and guidance throughout the planning and execution of this event. Uh, your commitment to empowering the community is truly commendable. We would like to extend our heartfelt uh, appreciation to the OZ members of y 2 Pro your dedication, hard work, and meticulous planning have been the driving force behind the success of this event. Without your tireless effort, none of this would have been possible. And we are truly grateful for your contributions. To all the participants, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Your active engagement and enthusiastic participation made this awareness session a success. As we conclude today's session, I warmly invite all of you to be a part of our future sessions as well. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Ms. Dushinra. We hope that you found the workshop informative and thought-provoking and that you live with new, uh, new insight and ideas. And with that, we conclude today's workshop. Thank you once again and have a good night.